Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about capacitors. Uh, here, we're going to talk about what capacitors look like when we actually put them in, in an electric circuit. So that's really what capacitors are used for. They're in almost every electronic device you can think of. Your computer chips, your, your computers, your, your phones, everything has capacitors in it, and it's really, really useful. Uh, they serve many purposes. Um, but the central reason that we use capacitors in circuits is because they store electric charge, and we talked about that in the last section. So here we're going to talk about uh, when we put them in a circuit. So we're going to start drawing some circuits from here in the next few sections, some basic circuits to kind of understand how electricity is going to flow. And we've talked a little bit about that already. And we'll look at, in specific, we'll look at putting these capacitors in series and in parallel arrangements. Uh, and that's sort of a fundamental thing. We'll talk about it here for capacitors. We'll talk about it later when we talk about resistors. Uh, and it's sort of a fundamental electrical thing. So let's talk about that now. So a capacitor is uh, what we talked about in the last section. It's usually two plates of material, separate, uh, two plates of metal separated by, could be air, could be just an air gap, could have some other material in between there. We'll talk about what that is later, some you know, plastic or some non-conducting material between the plates. The plates never, never touch. They're very close together. So you can think of two sheets of paper, very, very close together. And of course we have our little terminals coming off that we connect to the rest of the circuit with. And, um, and so usually the capacitors that you see in your, you know, in your computer or whatever, they're cylindrical, and that's because they're, they're literally rolled up like a, you can think of paper towels if, if you want to think of it that way, a really, really thin material wrapped up on itself. Of course, there's an insulating material between the plates, so they never touch, but they're really tightly wrapped, and that's why they a lot of times look cylindrical like that. Um, the other thing I want to say, and we talked a little bit about this last time, the unit of capacitance is a farad. A farad is a huge value of capacitance, so you'll never see a capacitor in your computer or anything have a one farad value. You'll always see them really re measured in microfarads, so 10 to the minus 6 farads, or even picofarads, nanofarads, especially when you start looking at the capacitors on a, you know, like on a computer chip, those are incredibly small values of capacitance. So don't think that you're going to be start dealing in farads. If you, if you calculate an answer to, to one of your problems that is, you know, in terms of farads, you know, five farad capacitor, probably made a mistake somewhere or the problem wasn't really realistic. Um, okay, so there's two main ways that we're going to talk about uh, capacitors in this section, in series and in parallel. And we'll talk about it also for resistors. In series, you can think of the capacitors uh, lined up end to end, really. So we'll draw a picture in a second, but you can think of a capacitor here and then another one right here, and they're connected. And you just literally lay them end to end in the circuit. And in parallel is sort of the opposite of that. It's when you would have a capacitor and then one sort of right next to it. So let's start talking about uh, capacitors. Capacitors in parallel circuits. All right, in parallel circuits. Uh, and so the basic thing to think about here is a very, very simple thing. And, and keep this in your mind also as we go through the course, because when we get to inductors and resistors and other circuits later on, uh, you know, we'll have a similar arrangement for different components. So here's a battery. Remember, a battery almost looks like a capacitor, except it has a longer line and then a shorter line. The longer line is telling you which terminal is positive on the battery, and the, um, the shorter one is telling you which, which terminal is negative. So you don't really have to write positive and negative. If you draw a symbol like this, you know from looking at it that the longer line is always positive. So you can think of positive current flowing this way, and uh, in real life, the, the electrons are really the things that are moving. So the electrons are going this way. But when, we're, when we talk about electric circuits and physics, and also when you get into electrical engineering, even though the electrons are the things that are actually moving through the circuit, we generally don't talk about electrons moving because electrons are negative, And then all of your currents would be negative, And you would have lots of negative signs going everywhere for no reason. So having an, a negative current going this way is exactly the same thing as having a positive current going the other direction algebraically. So we always talk about positive current. So even though all of you know electricity is really electrons, when you're talking about circuits, we don't talk about electron motion. We talk about these positive, they're called holes, because the electrons have sort of left behind a hole um, there as they move along. So we, we think about a, a sort of a fictitious positive current going this way. The algebra gives the exact same answer as if we had just chosen and looked at the negative current going the other way. And we have a lot, a lot cleaner um, a lot cleaner math because of it, because of those negative guys that 